know, I start to think, if the planet don't have elephant, this planet empty for me. They are the color of the planet. They are beautiful. If we want to protect them, we have to do right now. Asian elephants are captured from the wild to be used as service animals or are put on display in zoos and circuses. Every single captive elephant across the world has one thing in common, is that they have all been through something called the crush box. I have to educate people. It's so frustrating for me. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, today's the day. We're leaving for Thailand and Cambodia on an elephant rescue. Look at their eyes. They want to be freedom like us. She stopped drinking water. We're still trying to move as fast as we can. They want me to put everything under carpet. I will speak. Even my life will be suffer. He's never let them be free. This is the first time. So you're breaking the chain. They accept you as the hook now. Oh, left. are outside on the table in your gift bags which you don't want to miss getting those and also the books don't leave before you go over to the gift bag section where the books are and Ashley will personalize the books first of all um, it's all up on the screen but I want to just ask you can you talk a little bit about how you assembled the team because the music was so amazing wasn't it let's hear a round of applause for you. Music is so important and, you know, it's so detailed and it's so emotional. How did you choose a team? Um, and can you talk a little bit about just the process of your first uh, making your first film? Absolutely. Um, oh, here we are. Uh, here they are. Ross Dinnerstein, yeah. producer. Ross Dinnerstein. Sophia Holtquist and Ian Holtquist, who's an executive yeah. producers. And we were talking about you guys. So I was just asking Ashley, how did she assemble the amazing team, especially you two that made, you know, music makes a film. I mean, it can really, not that all the elements don't come together, but I've, my father always said that the music was such a key element in the emotional <clears throat> resonance of the film. So can you talk a little bit about how you got on board? Absolutely. Um, sure, I'll, I'll start. Uh, again, Kat, I cannot thank you enough for having this film. Please, everybody give a huge round of applause to Pat Kramer. She's just blazed a trail in using film as a way to make change and film as a way to change the way we look at animals and the environment and also the people we share the earth with. So Kat, truly, thank you for choosing us, it us and a bunch of elephants. Guys. So, um, yes, uh, so this has been a, a, well, they're all passion projects, but uh, I've been working on Love and Bananas for five years. Uh, I partnered very early on with a production company called Change for Balance. They were on from inception. They unfortunately can't be here tonight because they're filming. Um, but we all have the, this intention in mind going into it to make a film that was high in action and solution and low in graphic content. We really wanted to make a, a documentary that would be suitable for everybody to watch and that people could watch and not be flinching if an image would, would come on. Uh, also, a, a huge part of this was making the film appropriate for kids. So I cannot tell you what it means that so many kids are in the audience today. Um, 
Yes. Yeah, because the children and the kids and the young, the young activists are our future with this issue and all issues, but especially with this. So uh, yeah, and then once we were at, um, once we were, you know, to, to actually get the the initial to to start this going, um, we actually did an Indiegogo. Uh, I pitched it to many many people around town, and everybody found the tops of their shoes or the wall behind me. <laughs> no one cared about Asian elephants. Uh, and um, luckily enough, my team, Change for Balance, stuck with me and we launched an Indiegogo because we knew that when an Asian elephant would be available for rescue, we would literally have to jump. Um, there were two false starts and when we finally got the message from Lek, I got it via Facebook Messenger. This has all been planned via Facebook Messenger. <laughs> and she said, um, when, when we found our girl, when can you be here? And I said, when do you need me? And she said, now. Uh, and I had about a week to um, to get myself, John McCarthy, Roddy Teba Dubai, and Max Ritter, and uh, we overnighted it to Thailand. And before we knew it, we were on the back of a truck with Noi Na, an 8,000 pound elephant, driving across Thailand. Um, when we completed, I mean, the people the people that are up on this panel today saw something in this film and championed it. And this film would not be here without them. Uh, Ross Dinnerstein saw a very, very rough cut. Um, I had done several films with Ross as an actress. We reunited at a Sundance at the like pizza noodle place. You know that midnight place at Sundance? So yeah. Um, and I told him about the project and he was kind enough to look at it and Ross came on board and literally we were just about at zero on Indiegogo and Ross championed it and got introduced uh, John and I and the whole team to Ian and Sophia, who again saw something in the film. They created a completely original score that actually incorporates um, samplings of elephant sounds, something I kind of only dreamed of at the beginning of it, and they made it possible. Um, and then um, we, you know, we went out to sell it and everything like that, and it was, again, a bit of a tough go around, uh, and David Castleman came on board. Um, and saw something in this film and uh, came on board for the distribution, but also to do a publicity launch on it. Because with this film, we weren't just trying to get a release. It was just as important to raise awareness about the cause. The Asian, a lot of people know about African elephants, but a lot of people don't know about Asian elephants. And I felt that there was a big space to tell this story. And David came on board and championed that and uh, helped with our release. So I've hogged the mic enough. I'm gonna pass it down. <laughs> but I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the host committee that's here tonight. And a lot of them um, are were the Indiegogo supporters, including Joanna Cassidy. And so thank you so much. And the, re the rest of the great supporters that are here tonight, thank you so much for coming and for continuing to support. Because we still need your just your presence and your spreading awareness on social media or just, you know, just being here means a lot. Anyway, um, so back to our two musical geniuses. Can you talk a little bit about how you put the score together, just the process, and had you seen a rough cut of the film? I mean, I know you came on board um, after it was already in production. Um, so we were able to um, see, I, I believe it was a rough cut, but it was pretty close to, um, being finished and um, we kind of just approached it the way we do with most scores that we do uh, together and separ separately. We kind of plotted out what each section needed kind of emotionally and texturally. And then um, we were talking to, um, we were talking earlier about this, about how um, we actually, I believe started with uh, the more melancholy and kind of the heavier scenes that now all of you have seen. So it's no longer a spoiler alert. <laughs> Um, you know, with like the the crush box and all of those for some reason just it was really e Unfortunately easy to Emote that because it's just you know, it's so profound and it's so intense um, And those were the scenes actually where we were sent an hour's worth of elephant noises Which we took and categorized into different categories, you know, like um, elephant laughter moans groans and from there we kind of were able to create this palette, um, which you can hear, especially when, um, I think it's like the nighttime when um, they're on the truck and you can hear Lex's voice singing the lullaby that she sings to the elephants. Uh, and that has a lot of elephant noises, but do you want to add anything else? That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, 
Yeah, so I, we kind of started with those darker moments and kind of creating like the more like ambient beds that really stem from the eloquent sounds. But then there's a whole other side of the film where it's kind of the more, not necessarily upbeat, but it's like a little poppier, more pleasant kind of moments like the elephant animation or uh, walking through the jungle or um, breaking the chain, moments like that. And that was an interesting mix where we kind of had instruments like kalimbas, which I think is maybe a little bit more African, but it kind of felt natural for parts of the story. And then there's moments where it's almost kind of like indie rock. So it's like a big melting pot of different musical ideas we threw together. Um, and then my favorite moment is Homecoming, which is when Noina steps off the truck and it's the big cinematic drums and that's where I always kind of get emotional. Um, but that was kind of like the big shining moment for me when we worked on it. Now, Ross, I know that you've known Ashley and worked with her before, and you say you have always loved elephants and animals, but how do you, when, you, when you have a film like this, how do you get the word out there to, to the schools? And you know, I know you guys are working on a campaign for that. Just how do you educate besides just evenings like tonight and having people see the film? Is there a campaign involved that every, or you know, some format that everybody could be involved with in getting the word out besides social media? I mean, I just have two word answer. It's Ashley Bell. I mean, uh -huh. Ashley has done all of this on her own, and I'm here to support her, but she doesn't need my help. She's a force, and you definitely yes. don't want to get in her way. Uh, yeah. but, but it is all Ashley. I mean, she is the heart and soul of this project, has yeah. been from day one. Um, you know, I'm happy and lucky to be a part of it, and, and I said, look, I, I, I can do, I've got a lot of friends that are super talented that I think are going to be agree with me that and come on board but it's it's all Ashley you know if you have a movie like this get Ashley on board That's the <laughs> well David I know you're so passionate about elephants and animals but I don't know if everyone knows how passionate can you talk a little bit about that and also how you came on board the film very passionate <laughs> Is that, would that qualify? Uh, I, I'm a trial lawyer by trade, and for the last 30 years I've been doing pro bono work for animals. And, um, sometimes it's two steps forward, three steps back. Sometimes it's worse than that. And occasionally you make some progress. Um, the Cambodia Wildlife Sanctuary is something that uh, started 15 years ago, and I was fortunate enough 10 years ago to partner with LEC. And when Ashley asked to come out and see it, and to uh, see the elephants, and we flew in, I had no idea, frankly, when we landed it would be on fire. And so her camera was running, and I've had this question a few times, no, I don't fly helicopters. Uh, I'm a passenger, but they were shooting. I wasn't even aware of the camera, and most of, in fact, you should know, none of this was scripted. Uh, Ashley literally just took a sea of footage and then found the film out of the footage, not the reverse. And it started when she met Lack at the Cambodia Sanctuary, and I was thrilled that she wanted to give a voice to this issue because those of us who are involved in Asian elephants uh, are very passionate about the concerns which are quite different from Africa. I'm working in Africa too, I'm working in a lot of places to try and help, but in Asia, the problem is quite different. And so to bring attention to this was remarkable, but I never dreamed that it could be what she's made it into. This film speaks to people who've never even thought about the problem, never looked to see if there was a problem. The people who love elephants, the dream about going to a place where they can ride elephants, and they have no idea that they're hurting elephants by doing that or going to circuses and zoos, they don't know. And so this is opening people's eyes that we could never reach otherwise, and it's, it's really been a, a blessing to be involved and to help it wherever I can. Yeah. Well, it's films like this that change the world. Uh, my father in, in the early 70s made a, an, probably the first animal rights film that's become a cult classic, and it's also made change called Bless the Beasts and Children, for those of you that know it. Um, and it about, was about the slaughtering of the buffalo and that in Arizona, and it actually outlawed that cruel practice because the film was so impactful, and this movie will do the same thing. 
Now I want to take the time to open up to some audience questions because I know you have a lot of them. Um, okay. Are you allowing mm -hmm. film festivals yeah. to show your film, to screen it, to cause awareness? Absolutely, yeah. Um, Sign me up. Okay. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, yes, we had our uh, um, we had our world premiere at the DC Environmental Film Festival earlier in the year, and it was just an incredible venue to open the film there um, in DC. I mean, to present this film there in the audience, we had the Earth Day Network, we had the Humane Society, we had um, uh, Endangered Species Coalition all of the NGOs came out to support the film and they've actually been vital in the rollout of the film. They've all come on board as, uh, as, as partners of the film to, to do email blasts and localized blasts where we've been in theaters. Um, so we, we uh, did our world premiere at the DC Environmental Film Festival and then we also opened at the KCET Earth Focus Festival and we have been hitting festivals around, I think we're gonna be in Borneo and something in Russia, and it's, re it's really kind of taking off. Um, in addition, I would also love just to take a moment um, to, to thank Susan Rosenberg here from The Greater Good. Um, um, uh, the Greater Good has come on board as a partner for, uh, for our theatrical release, um, and uh, they launched the Love and Bananas Fund inspired by the film, and we did a fundraise to save for $40,000 to rescue an elephant named Civili in Laos and for a bunch of medical equipment that Lek needed. In nine days, $80,000 was raised with 100% going to Lek in her work in Southeast Asia. So thank you. the new campaign to uh, raise the money to save the next elephant, and then 199 more. And we, uh, we launched the campaign yesterday for Fa Mui, and she just arrived at the uh, Elephant Nature Park this morning. Absolutely, yeah. We we started our theatrical release in uh, at the end of April um, at, in New York and L.A. And the goal, uh, Abramarama, uh, just an incredible distributor, came on board. And the goal was 20 theaters. We just we just hit 87 theaters nationwide, and we're getting new bookings every day. Now, yeah. On Friday, it opens at Arena Cine Lounge. And we'll be playing there for a week. Yes, due and, to the like the, the people have like shown up, <laughs> um, and because of this, our our Abram Rimmer, our distributor, we we had a big conversation to kind of be like, well, okay, what do we do now? People like elephants, um, so uh, they're actually going to bring it back into theaters in LA and New York starting this Friday at the Arena Cine Lounge and New York at Cinema Village for a week long run to qualify it for an Academy Award. <laughs> Yes, Modella. I just want to say it was a wonderful movie. I felt, I felt the spirit of it all. I, I can't see you. I got lights in. <laughs> I'm just wondering uh, how long did it take to edit all of it, uh, the, the movie, uh, from all the footage? Uh, for sure. Um, we had about 75 hours of footage, and it took about six months. Uh, we partnered with a, a brilliant two-time Academy Award-nominated doc writer named Fernanda Rossi. She has the nickname of being the doc doctor. Um, and uh, we, uh, she, she also calls herself like the, um, the midwife of projects because she helps to have a third eye when we're trying to craft a film. So through a series of very heavily constructed exercises, she helped pull out mainly character and objective, um, which was really easy to relate to as an actor. And that really quickly strung together our arc. And then we pulled in the scenes to support that. And in about six months, we had our uh, a full rough cut 
which for a doc is, is kind of, is, is pretty quick. Yeah. Thank you so much. For coming. Yes, in the back there. Uh, Brianna? Yeah, I know a bunch of people were asking me about the lead elephant. Um, what's going on with that rescue, risk rescue, and how do you guys feel about that rescue if it happens? Well, for those of you who don't know, Billy is the lone male elephant at the LA Zoo. He's been there for almost his entire life. He came from Malaysia when he was four. Uh, I filed a lawsuit to uh, get him out uh, over, well, 2000, well, 2007, I believe. Anyway, it was almost a decade of litigation. We went all the way to the California Supreme Court. And although we won through the trial in two appellate courts, the Supreme Court reversed on a technicality. So we are back at square one, and the city is basically taking the position that they need to find an independent expert to decide whether or not it's okay for Billy to be in the zoo. Now, we went through an entire trial with all experts from all over the world, but now they're looking for a single expert to talk about it. So it's a subject of great political contention. But we hope uh, in the very near future, uh, when the timing is right, we are going to make a public offer in the LA Times to the city to raise a million dollars, donate it to the city earmarked for the homeless so that they will release Billy. And the greater good has agreed to fly him to the Cambodia Wildlife Sanctuary to release him. So when that comes out, put a lot of pressure on the city council. Also, just the notion of that with what we're trying to do is it's it's so exciting to kind of enter the, I guess, the four-year consideration platform to raise awareness for Asian elephants. A lot of people think, oh, that's great, but that's not our problem. These elephants are in Southeast Asia. No, they're not. They're right in our backyard. And we hope that this film will really, really highlight the situation that Billy is in and work to get him out. I have to also add that for my third installment for this series, I had uh, the first elephant awareness film that I premiered, um, and that one was, was also the beginnings um, of the campaign to free Billy, and it, that film was very heavy, and kids and families couldn't really see it. It had so much animal cruelty, but Ashley's film is for everyone and it still gets the point across. So I look upon them as they were bo they're both effective, but this is the one that really brings the issue home and that's why I'm so proud to be here tonight. Oh, yes, yes. How did you make the scene where they were hurting the elephant in the crush box? Right, the scene where, where they were hurting the, the elephant in the crush box. That is uncover footage, uh, undercover footage that Lek Chyler got. Lek has spent the last 20 years of her life, that's her life's work, getting footage like that. Um, she's risked her life to get that footage. She has multiple assassination attempts on her to get that footage, and she's actually getting a big amount of backlash right now in Thailand. Um, um, you know, when I when I first told Lek that the film was coming out and we were going to have, you know, a national release and would she consider coming to New York to, to do press, Lek wrote me back just this sentence. Yes, let us go to battle. And that's what it's been like for Lek. And it's, you know, I'm so happy in the sense that we've touched a nerve because since this film has happened, Lek has turned 32 trekking camps into humane sanctuaries. Wow. to give you a feel for how challenging her life has been since she committed herself, as you can tell in the film, literally it was as a child she made this decision that she was going to fight for elephants, but there was a point early in the Elephant Nature Park history where the government and the military were literally her enemies, and one day she got word through the grapevine that they were coming for her elephants. And she stood outside the gate of Elephant Nature Park with 20 rifles aimed at her from the military. And behind her were visitors to the sanctuary with cameras. 
And she told them, if you want my elephants, you have to kill me first. And they left because of all the cameras that were there. So we're all learning nicely, and with the power of film, Pretty substantial. Wow. Anyone else? Yes. Oh, um, well, gentleman in the back. I'm very curious. In the beginning, you were talking about um, how the elephants affected nature and the ecosystem. Yeah. I'm curious, with uh, the increase in elephants and all the wonderful work, is it changing the landscape or animals? More animals, more growth, more. Is the population changing? Is it being restored? Um, yeah, David's got a great answer to that. Um, I, I, I would love to just share briefly about Lek's work. So when Lek loads into a sanctuary, it's not just helping elephants. Um, Lek, Lek creates just the perfect model of ecotourism. Elephant Nature Park is one of the most, uh, the, is the, one of the most popular tourist destinations in Chiang Mai. And when she builds this sanctuary, she protects the trees all around it. She also builds schools um, for all, all of the children and provides medical aid and running water, electricity, and jobs on the sanctuary so that the villagers don't have to illegally log and poach. They can make a steady income and even more by working on the sanctuary and working with the animals. Um, at the Cambodia Wildlife Sanctuary alone, they've planted one million trees. Wow. Yeah. Two million trees. <laughs> but can you tell about the elephants, David? How they found the elephants? Well, obviously, the Cambodia Sanctuary also has rescued elephants, and in the country, there are very few wild elephants left. Um, most have been captured and put into servitude of some kind or uh, are stepping on landmines and suffering severe consequences. And so the few that remain are mostly in the mountains and they're not running through the areas where people live because the people consider them a pest. They come on their land, they stomp, they eat their crops. So much like in the United States, deer in the Midwest are treated very similarly to the way elephants are treated in Asia. But after the sanctuary has been up and running for now 15 years and we rescued elephants and we have uh, our volunteers and people coming to stay there, we discovered that two wild elephants and a male and a female came into the sanctuary and mm -hmm. decided to hang out. So <laughs> we believe that they are communicating, as Olive said, uh, through their feet. Uh, and it is true, they do listen to infrasonic sound and they can communicate up to 20 miles away. Oh, wow. And we believe that the elephants that are in the sanctuary have been communicating with the wild ones. Yeah. And Lech believes that more will come. So it's kind of exciting. Yeah. We have time for a couple more questions, but I first wanted to acknowledge before I forget Amy Mele, who's our ASL interpreter tonight. And also, all, all my volunteers that helped, um, I couldn't have done it without you and everyone that helped and myself and Ashley and the whole team bananas. Um, anybody else? Right there in the back, Ramona. donating the money that we get 
from the proceeds of the film. And so I need to talk to somebody about who to write the check to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's for Lona Mays, who's also on tonight's post community. Thank you. Um, Daniel, you had a question? Yeah. How hard was it uh, getting there and getting back with the elephant? Oh, that's a great question. Um, it was very hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, um, uh, you know, it wasn't hard for us. It was my first, and I haven't gone on another one, but that's what it takes to take an elephant every time they want to go to a zoo or a circus or they're moved for entertainment. Um, so the question r really goes to Noina. Um, being on that truck, a really pivotal pivotal moment happened when I saw, uh, when, when Noina had heat stroke, um, which the heat stroke was also just a note, a result of the atmosphere we were in. Um, oftentimes they'll cover the truck, um, but the wind pickup would have been too severe. Uh, but literally the heat and the pressing humidity coming at us from, from all sides, that's, that's what made her get heat stroke. Uh, we had a vet tech with us the entire time. Um, when Noina got heat stroke, to see Lek go into action that fast, um, I I'd never seen anything like that before in my life because Lek really did think she was going to die and that truck was going to tip over. And Lek, when, when Lek stopped smiling, you know things were getting intense and very severe. And that was a point where I'd never been in a situation where any emotion would have so clouded judgment and so gotten the way of helping move, helping find the air pockets and just moving the situation forward. Uh, unfortunately, that's what Lek has to deal with, with all of these rescues. And the love that you mentioned in the film, that comes from Lek. Lek, I, I so wish she could be here tonight, but what she says is uh, she, she often rescues the oldest elephants on her list because she finds that even if they die at her sanctuary, they've at least died in dignity. And she treats them with dignity and with respect. My favorite line is when she calls them people in the film. Um, and that's how she regards them. And, uh, and they're somehow able to forgive and become elephants again. We have time for one last burning question. Or comment? Thank you. Oh yes, in the middle. Um, what I really loved about the story is the human element, and then of course the animal element. But you can really see how it intertwines, um, especially with the owner and seeing the realization. And so what I really loved is that it wasn't the typical, you know, save the animals and let's do this, but you actually can embrace the storyline and be there with you, but really feel that human element that I feel that we have lacked so much in our universe. And you brought that full circle, so I just wanted to applaud you and your team. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank um, you. Again, I, I would... That that's like a lot of people have come up to us and they've gone, I read an, I wrote an elephant. And yeah. you know, when you know better, you do better. And um, to quote Gretchen Weiler, I believe, uh, every animal rights lover or activist has a, a fur coat in their closet. You know, it's, it's truly yeah. when you know better, you do better. And I just wanted to, sure. to take a moment to um, talk about that. We launched an impact campaign along with the film. Uh, it was really important to us to, to at least have a way that people can take four easy action items to get involved in the film, if you go to loveandbananas.com, uh, Lek has always said the key to saving this species is education. So we have shareable resources that you can post and tweet and share. Um, we also have, thanks to the greater good, a humane travel pledge that you can sign and say, I won't support exotic animals being used for entertainment. Um, also, uh, we've been working with an impact producer uh, to have community screenings and educational screenings. Since Love and Bananas was released, we've had 250 requests for community and educational screenings happening all across the country. Um, yeah. uh, and the last thing is the Love and Bananas Fund through the greater good. 
uh, where you can uh, log in and see the latest rescue and participate in that rescue. And then we will be releasing on I, uh, okay, this week, this Friday in theaters with 100% of proceeds going to the Cambodia Wildlife Sanctuary. Then, uh, <laughs> um, then on Tuesday, uh, July 24th, we will be on iTunes um, globe, uh, worldwide, uh, and 10% of all downloads will be donated to the Cambodia Wildlife Sanctuary. And finally, on July 30th, we'll be having our broadcast premiere on STARS. And I will be there moderating and, and hosting some of the nights at Arena Cine Lounge. Um, the, the last one. Stars. Stars. I just want to add one thing. We're often asked, what can we do? And Ashley's just given you a list of things. But those are adult things, and they're important things. But especially to the kids who are now the next generation in the hope for the future. And for all of those of you who are in the audience who are not yet animal advocates, I live by, and I know many people I know live by, a mantra and the idea of helping animals. And it comes up in different ways for different people. But I think of a story that my wife passed along to me years ago, and I call it the starfish story, and it's apocryphal. It's about a child on a, a little east coast beach at low tide, and the starfish are drying on the rocks, and this little boy is throwing him in the water. And a man comes up and says, what are you doing, son? He said, well, I'm saving starfish. And he throws another one in, and the man says, well, look down the beach. There are millions of them. You can't make a difference. And ignoring him completely, as only children can do, picks up a starfish, throws it in the water, turns back with a smile and said, made a difference to that one. You're right. And in our lives, so many people who love animals consider progress the enemy of perfection. If I can't solve the problem, I won't do anything. You must save each starfish. You'll get an opportunity every day, something small, grab every starfish you can. Every once in a while, you'll get to save a bunch of starfish, but just keep your eyes open. They're there, do what you can, and the world will be a better place. Thank you so much. On that note, unless anybody has any questions, you, we can talk to the filmmakers outside, and let's go get the books and the gift Thank you bags. all so much. Thank you so much. For